Now let's talk about the factors affecting the electrical activity of the pacemaker tissue of the heart. As the SA node is the primary pacemaker of the heart, the discussion that follows will be pertaining mostly to the SA node. First, I'll tell you about the effect of a normal physiological process on the electrical activity of the SA node. Left as it is, without any external innovation, the SA node is capable of generating 100 to 110 action potentials in a minute, thereby keeping the heart rate at the rate of 100 to 110 beats in a minute. This is the intrinsic rate of the SA node without any external innovation. But in normal conditions, the SA node receives constant stimulation from the vagus nerve. Due to the effect of the normal vagal activity, the action potentials are brought down to 60 to 110 action potentials in a minute and therefore the heart rate normally stays at the rate of 60 to 100 beats in a minute. This is the effect of normal vagal activity on the SA node and this is a normal physiological activity that keeps the heart rate at the rate of 60 to 100 beats in a minute instead of its intrinsic rate. You know that the normal vagal activity keeps the heart rate in check. That is, it lowers the heart rate to less than the intrinsic rate of the pacemaker. But when the vagal stimulation is increased more than the usual, that can lead to further lowering of the heart rate to less than that of the normal range. You know that the normal heart rate is 60 to 100 beats in a minute. When the vagal stimulation is increased greater than the usual, the heart rate can get much more lesser than the normal, that is less than 60 beats in a minute. But in some individuals, that is in trained athletes, the heart rate of less than 60 beats per minute is normal because it is a normal physiological adaptation that helps the heart to pump more effectively. These are the other factors that can affect the heart rate. Sympathetic stimulation leads to increase in the heart rate and temperature that is when there is an increase in the temperature like in case of fever increases the heart rate drugs also have an effect on the heart rate for example digitalis decreases the heart rate whereas epinephrine increases the heart rate in the next few slides I will explain to you the mechanism behind the factors that affect the heart rate. The factors affecting the heart rate act by affecting the membrane potential of the pacemaker tissue of the heart. Before going into the details of the factors affecting the membrane potential of the pacemaker tissue, let's review the electrical activity of the pacemaker tissue. If you haven't watched it already, please click on the video link above to watch my previous video explaining the electrical activity of the pacemaker tissue and its ionic basis. Briefly, 
there are two types of electrical activity that occur in the pacemaker tissue. One is the pacemaker potential, also known as the prepotential. And when this pacemaker potential reaches a threshold level, there is action potential, also known as the impulse. At the end of an action potential, the membrane gets hyperpolarized usually to the voltage level of around minus 60 millivolt and this is followed by the pacemaker potential at the end of the pacemaker potential the membrane potential reaches the threshold level which is around minus 40 millivolt and this is followed by the action potential. As the change in membrane potential from minus 60 to minus 40 millivolt occurs in a sloping manner, this part of the curve is also known as the slope of prepotential. The picture here depicts the changes occurring in the electrical activity of the pacemaker tissue on sympathetic stimulation and on vagal stimulation. This black arrow here denotes the point at which the sympathetic stimulation is given to the pacemaker tissue and this black arrow here denotes the point at which the Vagal stimulation is given to the pacemaker tissue. If you look at the first graph here, you can see before the sympathetic stimulation, you can see the normal pacemaker activity here. And this is the normal sloping pattern of the prepotential or the pacemaker potential. Once sympathetic stimulation is given, you can see that the slope of the prepotential is increased. Whereas, once vagal stimulation is given, the slope of the prepotential is decreased. There is a reason why these changes happen. Once sympathetic stimulation is given, the membrane potential quickly reaches the firing level or the threshold level. This leads to more number of impulses or action potentials in a minute and because of this the heart rate is able to increase to a greater rate you can understand this better by looking at the looking more clearly at the graph here so you can see for the same time period that is one two three four five lines here there is one electrical activity in the pacemaker tissue but once the sympathetic stimulation is given for one two three four lines there is one electrical activity in the pacemaker tissue so that's because on sympathetic stimulation the membrane potential is able to quickly reach the firing level leading to a quicker action potential and because of this the pacemaker is able to generate more number of action potentials in a minute leading to increase in the heart rate whereas once vagal stimulation is given the membrane potential gets hyperpolarized to even less than minus 60 millivolt and also the depolarization occurs very slowly and this leads to less number of action potentials in a minute so if you see here for one two three four five lines there is one electrical activity in the pacemaker tissue whereas once vagal stimulation is given for one two three four five six 7, 8, 9, almost 10 lines, there is one electrical activity. So 
the pacemaker is not able to produce more impulses the number of impulses produced by the pacemaker tissue decreases when there is vagal stimulation so the heart rate is therefore decreased the ionic basis of the changes occurring due to vagal stimulation is as follows when there is vagal stimulation that is when the vagus nerve is stimulated acetylcholine is released at the nerve endings of the vagus nerve and this acetylcholine binds to the m2 muscarinic receptors on the pacemaker tissue and that leads to opening of a special set of potassium channels and then there is increase in the potassium conductance of the pacemaker tissue through these channels that is the potassium ions go out of the pacemaker cells this leads to loss of positive ions leading to the hyperpolarization of the membrane and when there is hyperpolarization the depolarization to the firing level occurs more slowly leading to a decrease in the slope of the prepotential and that leads to decrease in the number of impulses generated in a minute leading to a decrease in the heart rate also due to vagal stimulation and binding of acetylcholine to the m2 receptors there is decrease in the cyclic amp in the cell leading to slowing of the opening of calcium channels and as the calcium channels open slowly the positive calcium ions do not enter quickly into the cell so it takes a longer time for depolarization to occur which further leads to slowness of the membrane potential to reach the firing level leading to decrease in the slope of prepotential thereby leading to a decrease in the number of action potential generated in a minute leading to the decrease in the heart rate whereas on sympathetic stimulation norepinephrine is released at the nerve endings of the sympathetic cardiac nerves and this norepinephrine binds to beta 1 receptors on the pacemaker tissue of the heart and that further leads to increase in the cyclic amp in the cell and that then facilitates the opening of l type calcium channels leading to rapid depolarization of the membrane and due to this the slope of the prepotential or the pacemaker potential is increased leading to increase in the number of action potentials or impulses produced in a minute leading to the increase in the heart rate you might recall that the sa node is the primary pacemaker of the heart and there are other parts of the conduction system that have the ability to act as a pacemaker when the impulses from the sa node are either blocked or depressed in addition to that the atrial and ventricular muscles can also spontaneously discharge impulses but that occurs only when the muscle fibers are injured or abnormal normally they do not have any prepotentials so they are not capable of spontaneously discharging their own impulses but they can discharge spontaneously when they are injured or abnormal Thanks for watching. If you found this video to be helpful, please consider subscribing to support the channel. And if you have any questions, feedback or topics that you would like me to cover, 
please let me know that in the comments below. See you next time.